what is up welcome back to today's youtube video happy saturday everyone and happy xfinity series race day i hope everyone's having an amazing day because i'm having an amazing morning here in the city of music and we're about to get back to national super speedway for some nascar xfinity series racing this afternoon today's vlog will be the same as it was for friday's vlog today we will be filming driver interviews and race clips plus a bonus at the end following the conclusion of the nascar xfinity series race where where tim duggar will be hosting a post-race concert in the fan zone area following the checkered flag dropping after the race and you're wondering what about driver intros just like fridays fans are not allowed to be going there saturday so Fortunately, we got to film driver interviews and it's going to be so, it's going to be so long again like it was yesterday filming, but we up to it again. All gas, no brakes today like it was Friday. It's going to be a good day like every other day, so we're in for another big day today. Now with my introduction and lines out the way, let's talk about today's NASCAR Xfinity Series race. Just like Friday's vlog, today we're gonna go over my picks for the day. We're going to go over my suck pick for the day, my underdog pick of the day, and who's gonna win today's NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Nashville. Let's get into it. All right, let's get started with our first pick of the day, the suck pick of the day. Here we go. For my suck pick of the day, I have someone who runs mid-pack every single week. He is on the borderline of making the playoffs this season. He is the 2021 NASCAR Xfinity Series champion. Other than his one bright, one hit wonder in the championship race at Phoenix in 2021 where he stole the show. Today, my suck pick of the week is Daniel Hemrick, the driver of the number 11 car. And y'all are wondering, what does he even do? I'll tell you what he does. He runs mid-pack every week. Sorry, but I just had to let it out right there. So unfortunately for all you, for all you Daniel, Daniel Hemrick fans, your driver's going to run mid-pack again, and he's going to suck this week. Sorry, guys. Now, the next pick of the day is the underdog pick of the week. And for my underdog pick of the week, I have someone at the surprise of many as my underdog pick. The driver of the number 10 all-star car for college racing. He is going trophy hunting this afternoon. He has had a career resurgence in NASCAR the last two years. And he's proven to be a decent oval racer himself, winning a couple oval races on old Atlanta, Las Vegas, and many other tracks in the Xfinity series. His Cup Series season so far has been a big disappointment, but the second half, I believe he'll turn it around. And so, for my underdog pick of the week, my surprise pick is AJ Allmendinger. So, for me and for his fans, get ready to potentially see your driver steal the show today at Nashville. And enjoy the show, Dinger fans. And for the main event, who's gonna win? Today's NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Nashville Super Speedway. For my pick of the day, my winner pick, I have the driver who has performed so well every single week this season. He is the future driver for Joe Gibbs Racing in the NASCAR Cup Series. He will eventually get back to Cup one day and eventually rewrite his career. And But today, I have someone who's won twice this year. He's proven to be a great racer in any type of car he gets into. You put him in any lower funded equipment ride, he will outperform his equipment and get the best of what he's getting. But today, he's the Joe Gibbs Racing Driver of the number 20 car, my pick of the day. He is the son of Front Row Joe. And my winner for today's NASCAR Xfinity Series race will be John Hunter Nemechek in the 20 car. 
So for all the John Hunter Nemechek fans out there, get ready to have another big day this afternoon. And that's my picks of the week. We'll see how big this age is at the end of the day when I come back here after, to, after the end of the day. And those are my picks of the week. Now, with all my picks out of the way, if you guys haven't already, make sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. And don't forget to follow me on all my social medias. They will be in the description below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's vlog and I will see you guys at Driver Interviews at Nashville Super Speedway. Here we go. One more time, let me hear it.
guys enjoyed those race clips and that short little post-race concert clip now let's talk about my day at the track so obviously I didn't film driver interview clips the first couple interviews uh, I didn't record and then after that I just said screw it we're not doing it today and we're just going to see what we can find. And then if we find something good, we're going to obviously record some of it. So there was like that 30 second motorcycle clip at the beginning. It was great. And then, yeah, it was very hot outside today, by the way. So, yeah, and it was very sunny. Man, crazy day. The race was very somewhat crazy and somewhat of a clown show to be honest. Yeah, it was basically a day of fighting for survival in that whole race. Now let's get into my picks on who I said was gonna suck and who the underdog pick of the week was and who was going to win. So for my suck pick, I said Daniel Hembrick was going to be victim of the suck pick this week. Unfortunately, it didn't age well. He finished eighth. He had a very decent car during the day. He ran pretty fast. He even led a couple laps, not off of strategy, off of green flag laps. He even had a top five car at the end of the race. He was running like third to fifth in the last couple laps before fading on that last in the double overtime 
And yeah, he proved me wrong. I guess he probably knew I was going to put him as the suck pick of the week. Or he probably got m tired of all the haters calling him trash and everything. But otherwise, good job to him on proving me wrong for this week. Now let's get on to the underdog pick of the week. And I said the underdog pick of the week was going to be AJ Allmendinger. And boy, I'm glad I picked him as my underdog pick of the week. Because he ended up winning. Boy, I didn't even think he was probably even going to win today. He had one crazy comeback of the whole race. At the beginning of stage two, him and the spoiled little brat, Ty Gibbs, got into a little wreck off of a restart, which they were starting in the, in the first couple rows on that restart on sta in stage two. Ty Gibbs and, and A.J. Allmendinger crashed. A.J. Allmendinger suffered rear end damage on his right rear end. And I thought pretty much after that, he was gonna fade the rest of the way and his car was gonna hurt aerodynamically. But he ended up making the comeback of the day, a big comeback into which he had a very good, it benefited him to long-term, to a good long-term run with this car. He was good on the long runs. He was good through lap traffic. He was just good, man. And man, all I gotta say is never count him out when he gets wrecked. And boy, he was excited when he won. I'm surprised he did not do his little Kirk Cousins impression of, you like that, you like that. I'm surprised he didn't like to do his Kirk Cousins impression like he always does after every win. But yeah, he won himself a guitar and he made one big comeback on the day. And then for Ty Gibbs, boy, let's talk about him real quick, that spoiled little brat. Anyways, man. Of all drivers that competed in today's race, the, during driver introductions, which I did not film today, he was the only one that got booed. And boy, I got to admit though, he was very fast today. He had honestly the best car, and if he did not crash, he would have probably won today, and he would have been tough to beat. Because he did win stage one, and then he got involved in that little big wreck at the beginning of stage two. And boy, when he got involved in that wreck, the whole crowd cheered. And then he took his car to pit road, tried to get it repaired, and then him and his team were like, nope, we can't continue on, send it to the garage. And boy, when he took his car to the garage, everybody cheered. And what, by what, I, what I mean by everybody, I mean the whole grandstands erupted in cheers. Like, there was someone behind me a couple rows back, I did not record this. He was chanting F Ty Gibbs. That's my wit. I'm not gonna say the word, obviously, because YouTube doesn't like swear words. Yeah, and then people would clap to it. And then people would wave bye-bye to him and then flip him off. And then, yeah, everyone was so happy. I was part of that whole crowd. And the person next to me was obviously doing the same thing I was doing, joining in on the fun. Boy, I was so happy. And then the rest of the fans and the grandstands were like saying, this is gonna be a good rest of the race, man, now that, we, that that little spoiled brat is out of it. And boy, it was so good to see him once again not be able to win one and to be able to exit the race so quickly, man. Talk about being a silver spoon kid too, man. Man, that was just, that, <laughs> I'm, I'm still shocked, honestly. I'm still happy about it all. And I will always be talk, be happy when that happens to him all the time, that he gets cracked when he crashes out. Man. Yeah, anyways, on to the winner pick. I said the winner of today's race was going to be John Hunter Nemechek. He finished sixth and was pretty much a non-factor all day. And man, he was the only Joe Gibbs Racing driver that finished the race because obviously his little 
teammate, the spoiled brat, Ty Gibbs, crashed out. And then his little other teammate, his full-time Xfinity teammate, Sammy Smith, was involved in a crash shortly after the whole Ty Gibbs and AJ, and AJ Allmendinger crash. He crashed out. So John Hunter Nemechek was the only Joe Gibbs racing driver to finish the race. I mean, man, I thought it was going to be very good. And honestly, some things never work out. Anyways, and then after the race ended, I went to watch Tim Duggar perform on the, at the Fan Zone stage. He performed a lot of good country songs. I didn't even understand any, know any country songs he was even singing. He was singing songs from like the 70s, 80s, 90s. I didn't even under, know any of the country songs. And I just stood there with a blank face like, what are you freaking singing? Like I'd just stand there like, and I, I was just like, man, are we gonna sing something that I actually know? Man, I was hoping he was gonna perform some like Eric Church type of music. Like I was hoping he was gonna perform Talladega because Talladega is my go-to song for race day. That's one of my two, that's my number one song I listen to every day before I go to the racetrack when I'm in town for the races. That's the one song. And that's like probably my favorite song I'm listening to right now. Man, I was disappointed that he didn't even perform that. And there was even one fan who was even asking him to perform that song. And I was like, please perform the song. He didn't. Anyways. And then he began to talk, the dude, while performing in the middle of his songs, he, he began to say, he stated that, Tim Duggar stated that he grew up 35 minutes away from Talladega, and that he always enjoyed watching Dale Earnhardt whoop the field at Talladega back in the day. And then he said, and if you didn't enjoy any of that, he gave every person the bird. <laughs> man, I should have, <laughs> man. And then he was also like saying some random bogus stuff about Kyle Busch, about him like at RCR now saying that, I guess those adults now like Kyle Busch now that he's no longer wearing the M&M's crap and then he's no longer driving Toyotas. And <laughs> yeah, I was like, you're dang right. Kids only loved him because of M&M's, I guess. I'm actually glad now adults can like Kyle Busch, not just be... <laughs> I mean, uh, he's no longer the candy man, he's the weed man now, which I very well approve. And I even see kids now wearing the whole three chi gear, the, which is the weed company that sponsors him. I'm like, dang, kids aren't allowed to wear alcohol branded drinks on their shirts, but they're gonna wear weed? <laughs> like, wow, what does this world come to? what parents are raising these kids to wear stuff like that. Anyways, and then, man, and it was like, and then Tim was saying Dale Earnhardt is a goat. That point, I should have stayed, I might, I wanted to say like, wrong, Jimmy Johnson is the goat, not Dale Sr. If I had said that, everyone would have thrown beer cans at me. Man, what a crazy concert that was. I mean, I didn't understand any of the songs that he was singing. I didn't know anything, so I just stood there blank faced, like bored out of my mind of like, when is this gonna end? When are we gonna sing something that I actually know? And then after that ended, I shortly left. Man, what a day. So that's how my day ended, and that's how my day went. At the track, everything was great. Man. All that's left now is the photo slideshow. Enjoy this one, and I will see you guys at the conclusion of the photo slideshow.
I hope you guys enjoyed that photo slideshow of my day at the trek. And with that, that'll be the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like on this video, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. And don't forget to follow me on all my social medias. The link to all those will be in the descriptions below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And boy, this next vlog is going to be the best one yet. The biggest party of the summer is right here. I can't believe it's almost here. One more night's sleep until the big day. The biggest party of the summer. Get ready for the biggest vlog yet. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.